we are hearing Shriman Bhagavatam. Yesterday we heard the way of presentation of the Vedic sounds. Shabda Brahma, that is more in relation to Karma Kant, is so bewildering that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. Yesterday I told, it is mentioned in Upanishad, why heaven is never full. One reason is this, because they will come down again. Another reason also in Upanishad it is given, uh, because uh, not all will go there, not so many. You require those pious activities. There are two ways. One is by one path, one will reach liberation. By one path, one will reach heavenly planets and then come back again down. But certain who have no pious activities or not so much, then they will directly be reborn here in this world, not going even there. So not all will go there. So for that reason also it is never full. Three ways are there, you will find them in Panishads. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places. It is long lasting, but still it is temporary and it does not touch your soul. It cannot fulfill your real self. That is still outside, so no one can be actually fulfilled. Then we also heard yesterday, for this reason, the enlightened person, person who has knowledge, uh, should endeavor, means transcendental knowledge, uh, and also not theoretical only, means he realized there is spiritual reality, which is eternal. For this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names, this material names. Yesterday I told, this is much mentioned in Upanishads there. They will always say these forums and names of this world. So, as long as one is in this world, he should endeavor only for minimum necessities of life. According to Yukta Vairagya, how much one needs to survive so that he can do bhajan, worship of Krishna. Not more than that, not less than that. Otherwise, it will be uh, uselessly wasted energy and time without worshipping Supreme Lord. You will see people, conditioned souls, because they have no feeling of the transcendental reality that it exists and Sambanda Gyan, what I have to do, they will spend 24 hours for only acquiring material things and fulfilling material desires, 24 hours. And although they are working 24 hours and seven days in a week and the whole year, still they can never get enough. They can never be satisfied. Okay, now I have enough. No, someone, may, someone is thinking if I would have 100,000 euro, then it is okay. When he gets 100, he will think, no, I need 1 million. Then it will be okay. 
When he gets one million, then he wants no, one million is not enough. 10 million I need, then it will be okay. So all the time, all these material desires are like this. They have got no end. Because it is impossible to fulfill your Atma with material things. So how much you collect, it can never, you can never be fulfilled. So sadly, those who have no faith in Supreme Lord, they are working very hard but for only these material things and it is uh, will be finished. But those who are enlightened, they have Sambandha Gyan. And there is another extreme, like Buddhists or Gya, impersonal Gyanis. They will understand these material desires can never fulfill one. And they also produce suffering because you become attached to that thing or that person and inevitably by the influence of time you will lose that or you will lose your body or anything so you will have to suffer so much because of that so they understand better we get liberated from this so they they are practicing uh, that dry renunciation and uh, very much austerities like this, but that is also not beneficial. Then you will only destroy your body and mind and this. So that is also not yukta varaga yukta varaga means not not too much not too less how much you need for normal survival peaceful life so that you can worship krishna that is possible for enlightened person he will practice like that in devil he should be intelligently fixed that is my my goal is to serve Krishna, to satisfy him. That is fixed intelligence. We heard from Gita, Stita Pragya. Fixed intelligence. And never endeavor for endeavor for unwanted things, anartha, so many things. We are all the time busy for for so to fulfill so many desires. But nothing can actually satisfy us. So it is useless. So those who are enlightened, their intelligence is fixed. My only target is satisfaction of Krishna, nothing else. They are peaceful, only, only they. So they never endeavor for unwanted things, being competent, to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing. Everything will be finished in due course of time. How much you can make buildings, money, or it will be finished. And while you are enjoying, also you cannot be satisfied. And the reaction also will come and all this. So they know this is not for what we should give our energy. Our whole energy should be given to serve Krishna. And in relation to this service to Krishna, we will also maintain our life accordingly as long as we are in this world by the will of Krishna. They also don't uh, wish for liberation or for going to Golok or nothing. No, they are only interested. Let me serve Krishna. And when they are in this world, service of Krishna includes also to, to collect or earn as much material necessities as necessary to serve him. These two things they are doing, but both are Target is satisfaction of Krishna. So their intelligence is one point that fixed.
Satyam kšito kim kašipoh prejaseir, bachov svesidehi up barhanej kim, satyanđelov kim puru dhana patria, dik valkaladov sati kim dukulej. You remember, Shankarshan offered to Britrasur so many things. You want sovereignty over this world. You want Druva Loka, you want heavenly planets. You want eight mystic powers or 18 mystic powers or money or liberation. I can give you. He said, no, I don't want anything. I only want your service. And as long as I will have to be in this world, according to my past karma, I will have to move in this world. I don't mind that. But my prayer is, let me have friendship with your devotees. Let me be in association of devotees so that I can get your service. That is my only prayer. So that is pure devotion. This is the teaching of Mahaprabhu. That is the only thing which can satisfy us fully. When there are ample earthly flats to lie on, what is the necessity of cots and beds? When one can use his own arms, what is the necessity of a pillow? When one can use the palms of his hands, what is the necessity of varieties of utensils? When there is ample covering, or the skins of trees, what is the necessity of clothing? That is possible in other yugas, they are doing such, and everything was easily available, water and everything. In Kali Yuga, it is not possible, but principle we have to understand. Srila Bhakti Thakur in all his books, he said, what is easily available? Should not endeavor a huge thing. What is easily available? for your maintenance that you accept in relation to service of Krishna, what is easily available and not too much, not too less, according to circumstance. Nowadays you cannot find, difficult to find some river, you will live by the river and directly drink water from a river that is rare. So you have to, whatever is easily available, but main point is, we have to chant Harinam and hear about Krishna on this. Simple living, high thinking. Simple living is individual according to time, place, circumstance. Chirani kim pati nasanti dishanti bhiksham nevangri pah para britah saritopya shushyan Rudha guha kim ajitovati no pasanan <coughs> kasma bhajanti kavayo dhana durma dan dhan. Are there no torn clothes lying on the common road? Do the trees which exist for maintaining others no longer give alms in charity means fruits and everything? Do the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty? Are the caves of the mountains now closed? Or above all, does the Almighty Lord not protect the fully surrendered souls? This is the main point. Those who are fully surrendered souls to Krishna, Krishna makes that arrangement. How they can easily get their material necessities so that they can worship him. Krishna will give such job or Krishna will give such uh, uh, some arrangement he will make or in India you can beg or like something or Krishna will reveal to individual person those who really are interested only to serve him so to to help them Krishna will make some arrangement so that they can easily get that and they can also worship him. 
but that, that applies only to those who are seriously interested in serving Krishna only. Otherwise, we should not make Krishna our servant. But we are eager to serve him and Krishna helps such devotees to make arrangement for their living and they can worship him. Why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth? No necessity. Those who are real sages, they are not depending on any conditioned soul for their livelihood. They are depending fully on Krishna. What is Krishna's arrangement? Either Krishna will tell him you do this kind of work or you beg or some what Krishna will desire, but they are knowing Krishna is my maintainer, Krishna is my protector, and they are doing their duty to Krishna, how he wants. And that is individual, how he wants. They are never in the mood of let me flatter that rich man so that he will give me some money, then I can live and then I can worship. No, even such thinking devotees, they don't have. And also those who are conditioned souls and they are earning much money, they also become proud. The more they have money, they are proud. So if someone flatters them, then they will readily give. But sadhus, they don't do this. They are not dependent on them. Krishna may give through them also, but sadhus will not think they are giving. Krishna is giving through them. And sadhus will not go to flatter them in order to receive. No, their duty is to serve Krishna. Our Gurudev also showed by his own example. Uh, when he was in Punjab, in Hoshiarpur, one temple, not Goryamat, some Hindu, some temple, Dharmshala, Sanatan Dharma temple. Then Gurudev gave Harikata. Then the managers of that temple, they came to Gurudev and said, we are so much impressed by your Harikata, we never heard. So it is our request, Swamiji, you remain here. We will provide everything, all food, clothes, place, money will give you, everything will give you. You have no any other duty, only once in a day you speak Harikata. That is our request. So Gurudev said, conditioned souls, they will think, oh, finally my speaking Harikata or my worship of Supreme Lord bore fruit, gave proper fruit, proper result, finally. So we will be jumping, yes, that is what I was always wanting, expecting. But the Guru said he refused, he said no. My Guru told me I have to beg for my maintenance and I have to go to many places to associate with devotees and to get devotion to many places I have to go so I cannot accept your offer. Why? Because Gurudev is interested in serving Krishna under the guidance of pure devotee and that will give him also proper maintenance, not in separate way and for enjoyment. And that is also temporary. Sometimes we are calculating, we try to make some like this arrangement, but if Krishna is merciful to those who uh, are sincere, Krishna will destroy that. He will destroy out of mercy 
to show you should not depend on that way. You should depend on me. And you should do what I want you to do. Not according to your some other calculation. That will not work. Or it may work, but for those who are worshipping Krishna only for these things. So they may get such facilities. So why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by heart or and wealth? They, they don't do this, sages, because they are getting what is easily available and by the grace of Krishna. So our only thing is we have to surrender to Krishna. That means surrender to his pure devotee. We have no direct connection with Krishna, but with his pure devotee appearing in bona fide preceptorial channel, that pure devotee will engage us in the service of Krishna according to Krishna's desire, according to our time, place, circumstance. All around. Evam svachite svata eva siddha atma priyorto bhagavan anantah Tam nirvrito niyatharto bhajeta sangsara hetu paramashtayatra. Thus being fixed, one must render service unto the super soul situated in one's own heart by his, means Krishna's omnipotency, by his omnipotent power, he is residing in the heart. He is unlimited, he is all, all pervading. He's everywhere and he's in heart. He's omnipotent. Because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited, he is the ultimate goal of life. And by worshipping him, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. Sangsara Hetu Paramascha Yatra. Hetu means cause. Like Ahoytuki, without any cause. Sangsara Hetu. What is Sangsara Hetu? When Sanatan Goswami played the pastime, he is eternally liberated so. Lavanga Manjari in Krishna Lila. But he played the pastime of being aspirant. So he asked Mahaprabhu, Who am I? Why do I have to suffer these threefold miseries? Adhyatmika, Adhivotika, Adhidevika, from my own body and mind, from other living entities, and from natural catastrophes. Why? And if I don't know this, how there can be any good for me? Who am I? If I don't know who am I, then how I can know what is good for me? Then Mahaprabhu told, it is the nature of every living entity to be eternal servant of Krishna. That is eternal nature. And, but when Jiva becomes averse to Krishna, doesn't want to serve him by the misuse of his relative independence. He wants to separately enjoy this maya. That is the root cause of samsara. Krishna bhuli seji onadi bahir mukh. Oto ek maya tarade samsara adi duk. When Jiva becomes averse to Krishna, then Maya catches him and he's getting all this suffering. And they are perpetual, unending, constant in this world. The only way to come out is this. Mahaprabhu told him, Sadhu Shastra Kripa Jodi Krishna Unmukohai Sejip Nistare Maya Tahare Chare. If by the grace of Shastra and Sadhu, both are mercy incarnate of Krishna. One becomes inclined to serve Krishna, 
here it is mentioned, by worshipping him, Supreme Lord, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. That is the only way. Other, you cannot, in any other way, you cannot solve the problems of this life. Impossible by any means, even not by renunciation. So, some think I will fully renounce, like Buddhists or Gyanis, I will fully renounce everything, then I will not suffer anymore. But that is also not true. Because what you will achieve is also one kind of suffering for Jiva. No fulfillment. Yes, you will not get this worldly suffering, but you will not get anything positive. So also you will be unfulfilled. It will be a one kind of suffering, like the Asa they've showed. He was dissatisfied, depressed, because that does not fulfill one. And that is also temporary. If you don't accept service of Krishna, you will fall down from that liberated position. Again, because you will search for some relationship. Because Jiva is eternally related to Krishna. If you don't accept service of Krishna, you will search some sort of relationship. And there is no relationship in liberation. Only one so that is also loneliness and depression and everything. So unless you accept service of Krishna, actual relation, that is eternal actual relation, if you don't accept, then you will search in these non-eternal relations. So only by this one can end the cause and by that also all suffering he can remove and he can get Fulfillment. Kastam tvanadritya parano chintam rite pashun asati nama kuryat pashyan janam patitam vetaranyam svakarma jan parita pan jushanam. Mahaprabhu said, for all my teaching, you will find evidence in Srimad Bhagavatam, authentic scripture. Also, you see everything is here. Who else but the gross materialists will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only, these worldly names, seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as the consequence of accruing the results of their own work. Onadi karama fole, poribhavarna vajole, toribare nadeki upai. We are singing this song. Onadi karma fole. By the fruits of my onadi karma, beginningless karma, I am fallen in this world and asha pasha shata shata kresh de virata. All the time I'm getting suffering because of these all desires. And that is coming near. That song is very nice. Bhakti Nutakur, vivid description of the fact. So, those who are gross materialists with hundreds of desires and only working for that and getting reaction, they will neglect such transcendental thought of worshipping Supreme Lord. Because they did not accumulate enough Sukriti and did not yet get Sadhu Sangha. Maybe they saw a Sadhu, but they cannot realize that he is a Sadhu and they cannot believe him or follow him. But when one gathers enough Sukriti and gets Sadhu Sangha or Shastra Sangha, then such thought will come to him. Yes, this is not good. 
I have to worship Supreme Lord, he is my eternal master. And on this karma only is producing suffering only. Kechitsva dehantar hridaya vakashe pradesha matram purusham vasantam chatur bujam kanjara tanga shanka gada dharam dharanaya smarante. Then you can understand how compassionate, how merciful those sadhus are who go everywhere and try to awaken this transcendental thought in conditioned souls to end their perpetual suffering and take them to Krishna. How compassionate. And if someone is doing such work for Krishna, to satisfy Krishna, because Krishna will be happy when conditioned souls will give up these things and come to him, then they will be rescued from suffering and they will get bliss. Krishna will be pleased. So those who are getting such type of work from Krishna to bring, try to bring conditioned souls to him. So they are doing for his satisfaction how Krishna will not maintain them. Krishna will automatically maintain them. They are only doing their duty to Krishna, given by Krishna. So they are always maintained. Our Gurudev told, why you are demanding money for speaking Bhagavatam? If you engage yourself in Krishna fully, will he not maintain you? Why you are demanding, I will speak Bhagavatam, if you will give this and this much money. That means you have no belief in Krishna, in reality, and you are not serving Krishna at all. You are depending on money, and that Bhagavatam is not Bhagavatam. What you are speaking, that is not Bhagavatam. It is money, money, money only, not Bhagavatam. But that is why we have to hear Bhagavatam from Bhagavat, devotee, one who is 24 hours engaged, in the service of Krishna, he can speak Bhagavatam. And he is directly maintained by Krishna. Krishna will arrange something for him. But if you separately you are thinking, calculating, then that is not... Um, then it is not connected to Krishna, so there will be some problem there. Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch and a club respectively. That is Paramatma. It is the size of the heart. You will find there in Vedanta Sutra, in few topics, this is explained why this size. One thing is he can take any size he wants because he's omnipotent. Another thing is he's transcendental. There is no measurement of him, but for the sake of meditation, it is described. It is the size of heart, because he is in the heart. But we should not think that he is some material thing, no. Prasanna vaktram nali na ya tekshanam kadamba kinjalka pishangavasanam lasan maharatna hiran Mayangadam Spuran Maharatna Kirita Kundalam. His mouth expresses his happiness. He's always smiling. His eyes spread like the petals of a lotus 
and his garments, yellowish like the saffron of a kadamba flower, are bedecked with valuable jewels. His ornaments are all made of gold, set with jewels, and he wears a glowing head dress and earrings. The person, personal form. Unindra Hrit Pankaja Karnikalaye Jogeshwara Stapita Pada Pallavam Shri Lakshanam Kostu Varatna Kandaram Amlana Lakshmya Vana Malaya Chitam. His lotus feet are placed over the whorls of the lotus like hearts of great mystics. On his chest is the coast of a jewel engraved with a beautiful calf and there are other jewels on his shoulders. His complete torso is garlanded with fresh flowers. That is superior meditation. That was that one, Viratrupa. Now he came to this. Vibhushitam mekalayangu liyaka ir mahadhanir nupura kankanadibi snigda mala kunchita nila kuntaler virocha ma nanana hasa peshalam. He is well decorated with an ornamental red about his waist and rings studded with valuable jewels on his fingers, his leglets, his bangles, his oiled hair, curling with a bluish tint, and his beautiful smiling face are all very pleasing. But someone who is meditating on transcendental form of Supreme Lord, he automatically realizes also Viratrupa of Krishna. And one who realizes Bhagavan, he also can see Paramatma and he can see Virat Rupa and he can see Jyoti, everything he can see. They are all connected. But according to capacity of worshippers, one will have to uh, start his meditation in a particular way. But in Kali Yuga, we can, by the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is sending his personal associates, we can immediately start with chanting his name with faith. Then this chanting will reveal all his forms. Everything will be revealed in purified heart. Only we have to be attentive to the name. Chant and hear attentively, then according to purity of heart, we can perceive them, the form of Krishna, all kinds of forms. Adina lila hasi teksha no lasat bru bhanga sam suchita bhuri anugraham ikshita Chintamayam enam ishwaram yavan mano dhara na ya vatishtate. The Lord's magnanimous pastimes and the glowing glancing of his smiling face are all indications of his extensive benedictions. One must therefore concentrate on this transcendental form of the Lord as long as the mind can be fixed on him by meditation. Ekaika Shungani Dhyanu Bhavayet Padadi Yavat Dhasitam Gadabritah 
जीतम जीतम स्थानम अपोख्य धारेत परम परम शुद्ध शुद्ध धीर यथा यथा The process of meditation should begin from the lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet, then the calves, then the tides, and in this way higher and higher. The more the mind becomes fixed upon the different parts of the limbs, one after another, the more the intelligence becomes purified. Yavana Jayeta Paravaresmin Vishweshwara Drashtari Bhakti Yoga Tavat Stavia Purushasya Rupam Kriya Vasane Pratah Smarita. Unless the gross materialist develops a sense of loving service unto the Supreme Lord, the seer of both the transcendental and material worlds, he should remember or meditate upon the universal form of the Lord at the end of his prescribed duties. The gradual procedure. But here it is mentioned Krishna is seer of both transcendental and material worlds. He sees everything. We are always under surveillance. He sees everything, what we are doing, what we are thinking, and all lives, and He is giving the fruit. No one can give the fruit of action, no conditioned soul. Only Krishna is giving. It is in Shastra everywhere. So what is happening is, must be, sanctioned by Krishna according to the result of means he's giving a result of action so nothing can happen without his will and he is all good he is taking care of all living entities so that they will learn about their actions and how the ultimately they should come to him. Krishna is making that reunion for everyone. There is no mistake. So when we surrender to Krishna's will, then we can be peaceful. But if we have some separate desire, separate calculation, separate uh, uh, idea how it should be how it should be better or how uh, on this then we, we will be always disturbed only those who are surrendered to the will of Krishna they can be peaceful because it will go by the will of Krishna and he is really all good my calculation is not all good. It is based on my selfishness. So I argue with Krishna or with his instruments like this. But as long as I don't give up my own selfish desires, I will always be disturbed because of these desires, not because of others or what is happening, but because of my desires, I will be disturbed. But those like Prahlad Maharaj or Harida Stakur like this, they are fully surrendered to Krishna. They are always in peace. So those who are doing their prescribed duties, at the end, they should meditate on this Viratrupa. To start with Krishna consciousness. Then when their heart will be purified and they will be eligible for more, then they can meditate on Paramatma. And then finally, Bhagavan, his associates, his Leela, everything gradually. But for us, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave very simple process. Krishna is Supreme Lord. 
Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dhanupram. He said Nitananda Prabhu. Nitananda Prabhu is non different from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said Nitananda everywhere. And Nitananda Prabhu said Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dhanupram. Krishna is your father, Krishna is your mother, Krishna is your friend, Krishna is your beloved, Krishna is you are related to Krishna, Krishna, Bajo Krishna, Bolo Krishna, Koro Krishna Shika. You worship Krishna, you take knowledge of Krishna, you follow his instructions, you worship, you sing Krishna. Nitananda Prabhu going everywhere, requesting everyone. Then, if we can accept this process, very simple process, no need of any speculation on that. You get the name of Krishna, you have to chant, and if Gurudev sees it is necessary, you will get Diti and mantras to worship the Diti, Diksha mantras to worship the deity. There is no speculation. Krishna appears in that form. Krishna appears as name. So when you serve, then automatically everything will be revealed. All anarthas will go and everything will be revealed and you will then become eligible to realize who you are in relation to Radha Krishna in Lila. And you will get that service. But we have to start from this point. Harinam and Diti. Diti not always necessary. Harinam is most important. Attentively, we have to, with service attitude, we have to chant. And also Gurudev will give Shastra, you hear about Krishna, you hear Harikata, all this, then by that process we can gradually get revelation of Lila and what is your service in Lila. Automatically it will come, step by step. Stiram sukham chasanam astito yatir yada jigasur imam angalokam kale chadeshe chamano na sajaye pranam niyachen manasa jitasur. O king, whenever the yogi desires to leave this planet of human beings, he should not be perplexed about the proper time or place, but should comfortably sit without being disturbed, and regulating the life air should control the senses by the mind. You know in Gita it is mentioned and also in Upanishads, according to time when you will leave this body, you will either go to liberation or you will go to Swarga and then again come down. But here it is about the yogis, they should not think about that, but they should fix on proper practice. Manasva buddhya malaya niyamya kshetra gya etam ninayet tam atmani atmanam atmani avarudhya dhiro labdo pashantir virameta kritiat. Thereafter, the yogi should merge his mind by his analoid intelligence into the living entity, that means Atma. And then merge the living entity into the super self. And by doing this, the fully satisfied living entity becomes situated in the supreme stage of satisfaction so that he ceases from all other activities. Here, Merging living entity into the super, super, super self means uh, to come to that transcendental platform and get the service of Krishna. You will also find in Upanishads there is air in pot and air outside. When you break the pot, then air outside and air in the pot will be one. 
So then Mayavadis, they uh, wrongly interpret. Because there it is mentioned that Jiva without Upadi, without material designations, will destroy that. But that does not mean that they will become absolutely one. It only means that Supreme Lord is beyond material designations and Jiva will also be beyond material designation. They will be non-different. But in the same Upanishad, you will find in another places that that means he will get the service. Both are on transcendental platform. In this sense, they are one. The, before Jiva was conditioned, now liberated, so they will meet each other on transcendental plane. So tomorrow, uh, there is a holy day, Baladev's Aras Purnima and Vaishnava, so we will hear about that.